can this day get any worse? Well, yes it can, she answered herself a microsecond later. As she entered the classroom, she could see that all the kids had put dibs on the desks way back at the start of the school year. There they all sat, chatting away with their chums. Nat felt very alone and very stared at as she walked in. The tittering had already begun as she looked around for a place to sit. Oh no. There was one empty chair. It was at the back, next to the one kid nobody wanted to sit with. Darius Bagley. He hadn't seen her yet because his attention was totally taken up with what was up his left nostril. It looked like he was trying to get his entire finger in. He worked away squeakily for a minute or two, not noticing Nat, who was desperately looking for another chair to sit on. Any chair! Get the right friend now and she'd be set for her whole school career. Must find the right friend! Suddenly, there was a horrible squelching sound and Darius triumphantly produced a crusty, glistening pen top. It's Natalia Buttface and the most embarrassing dad in the world. Natalia Buttface and the most embarrassing dad in the world is a chapter book by Nigel Smith. Illustrated by Sarah Horn, published by HarperCollins in 2014. It is about Natalia Bumole, a young girl, I'm guessing she's 12 or 13 years old, who begins a new school and is keen to make some friends. She's got two problems, her family name and her dad. Let's look at her name first. When you say it, Bumole, it sounds fine. But the way it is written, B-U-M-O-L-E, makes it look like bumhole or bumhole. <laughs> she keeps her name secret for as long as she can, but soon... Bumhole, 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 bumhole. The second problem is her dad. Now, all dads are a bit embarrassing. That's just something we do. I'm definitely embarrassing sometimes, but Nat's dad is even worse. He wears silly clothes, drives a terrible car, and everything he does seems to go wrong. Whether it's helping with a school trip or organising a birthday party. Can Nat ever forgive her dad for being the most embarrassing dad in the world? Now you might look at the cover of this book and think that maybe it's just quite silly. Um, a little bit like you're a bad man, Mr. Gum. Or maybe you think it's a graphic novel like Wimpy Kid or uh, Tom Gates. But it's really not. I mean, okay, it's called Natalia Buttface. But it's kind of serious in its own way. I mean, of course there are jokes, but it's about a girl who struggles to get on at school. It's about how she sometimes struggles to get on with her dad. And it's about her friend, who seems to struggle to get on with everything, including his schoolwork. It's a good book. There are parts that I think could be better, but it's nice. It's well written, and it's not just silly. 
it's about things that are important to young people. I think you should give it a try. Chapter 6 Miss Honey took them for hockey, another reason Natalia was trying to avoid it. Now, there are two sorts of teachers who do games. The first are the lumpy ones in shabby tracksuits, who can actually run and throw and kick and jump and catch and all that. At one time they wanted to be in the Olympics, but liked cigarettes, beer, cake, pork scratchings and Sunday lions a bit too much. These days they still like sports, but they hate kids. The other sort are the proper teachers, who teach a real subject, who like kids and like playing games with them. These teachers are a mixed blessing. They are much nicer, but they are rubbish at sport, and are just as likely to knock your nose off with a badly swung hockey stick as not. Miss Honey was one of those. As everyone piled into the changing rooms, Natalia handed Miss Honey the note from her dad. She wondered if anyone was in the library. Some of the well-thumbed books reserved for the year tens with black covers and vampires looked pretty interesting. Well, hurry up then, said Miss Honey brightly, waving the note. I'm looking forward to seeing what you can do. Betrayed, thought Nat, miserably grabbing Dad's note back. She read, Dear Dolores, my daughter is a very talented little girl. Her one fault is being too modest. I know she's great at sports because she's got the high scores on the Wii Olympics. And when she plays catch with her little cousin Marcus, she usually wins, even though he's quite big for a five-year-old. I've got a wonderful video of her on a beach last year. She just dropped an ice cream down her pants, and it shows how high she can jump when she puts her mind to it. At her old school, she even pretended to be ill just to let others take all the glory, but it's time she got the attention she deserves. Looking forward to seeing you on Friday. I'll cook. It'll be like old times, except this time, hopefully you won't get food poisoning. Love, Ivor. Bumole. That's the last time I asked my stupid dad for a note, she fumed, pulling her kit on. I don't care. I could have two broken arms and the bubonic plague, and I still wouldn't make that mistake again. She ran onto the playing field with the other girls and wondered who would be worse than her. Her plan was to stand next to that girl all lesson. But to her dismay, most of the girls looked super fit and keen. Some were already warming up, without being told. One girl was even doing press-ups. Nat sighed. Where's the pale, crying girl with glasses? She wondered. There must be at least one. It started drizzling. They were now huddled together in the middle of the pitch, and Nat was surprised to see that they were sharing the lesson with the boys. She looked, but couldn't see Darius, which meant her note must have worked. Oh, hang on. No, here he came, trudging sulkily onto the field in old baggy shorts and a stained top. He hissed at her as he walked past. So now I've got games and a double detention. Thanks a lot. Yeah, well, thanks to my dad, my note was worse, dog breath. They weren't taking any notice of Miss Honey burbling away in the background. We're looking at basic ball control and tackling. They might have heard if they'd been listening. I had a more rubbish note than you did, argued Darius. It was me who had the worst one, Natalia snapped back. This boy was really ungrateful. So, can I have two volunteers? Witted Miss Honey. Me, insisted Darius loudly. No, me, said Nat, even louder. Okay, Darius and Talia, thank you. Come here then. This is your fault as well, said Darius, as they collected their hockey sticks. I'm going to shout out your name. Natalia wrapped her hands tight around her stick. You are not, she said, but you are going to shout. 
She cracked him on the ankle. Bamow! shouted Darius. Rude boy! Another detention! shouted Miss Honey. Darius yelped and started hopping about. Darius, calm down! What is the matter with you? Don't answer that! Enough people have tried to work it out and failed. Great you two face each other! I don't want to look at his face, said Nat. I don't need to look at hers. I know what she looks like. Horrible. Darius, you have the ball. Now, on my whistle, let's start. Natalia Buttface is fairly easy to read. If you like longer books about anti-heroes, I recommend it to you. Some of the jokes are quite British, but they don't affect the story. There are five books in this series so far. Mr. O approves of Natalia Buttface and the most embarrassing dad in the world.